giving total powers to the military to come after the abductors is very laughable. It's a shame. For most protesters, the president's words are not enough. Some of the activists have also accused the police of attacking the protesters in the capital Abuja on Wednesday. The Nigerian police force is watching as hooligans that have been paid come and attack them, breaking over 70 chairs, um, stealing people's phones, snatching our handbags, breaking cameras of our persons and the media within um, our sitting. President Goodluck Jonathan's televised address has done little to appease the anger. No information has been released concerning what the military is doing to get the girls away from their captors. Nigeria's military says it knows where the girls are, but has ruled out using force to rescue them. New protests are being planned for the coming days. Protesters have also faulted African leaders and institutions of doing little. Meanwhile, ECOWAS, the economic community of West African states, on Wednesday pledged total support of the Nigerian government in its fight against terrorism. The conduct of Egypt's presidential ballot has been given a seal of approval by observers from the European Union. But those from the Arab League and another U.S.-based organization argued that the polls were mad by irregularities. For more on that and other developments, let's turn to this African news roundup by CFI. A group of observers from the European Union said Egypt's presidential elections were conducted in line with the law and were peaceful, but lacked the participation of certain stakeholders. However, observers from the Arab League and the U.S.-based group Democracy International said the elections were marred by irregularities. The party of the president of Madagascar, HVM, again asked members of the new force from Madagascar to join the new government including a few ministers from the previous president's government. With these former and new ministers, the president will form a new coalition government. African governments and the International Monetary Fund held a major meeting in Maputo, Mozambique Friday and agreed on the urgent need to harness the continent's rapid economic growth, saying a deeper structural transformation was needed so ordinary citizens can benefit from the boom. Sub-Saharan Africa is among the world's fastest growing regions, but poverty and unrest have tempered growth. Days after 17 people were killed in an attack on a church in the Central African Republic, tensions remain high in the capital, Bangui. There is also a barrage of anger against troops from Burundi, who protesters say allowed attacks on Christians. In the streets of the capital of the Central African Republic, two days after 17 people were killed in an attack against a church. The president describes the attack as a terrorist act, but the protesters blame the Muslim community in the Kilometer 5 neighborhood. All militias must be disarmed. Kilometer 5 is close to here and we can't disarm it. Why not? Why is the 2127 resolution not applied? There's anger against the United Nations peacekeepers, but particularly against the African Union's Burundian contingent, accused of allowing attacks against Christians. We want the immediate departure of Burundian forces in the shortest space of time. We want the liberation of Kilometer 5 so that our mothers, sons and fathers can go about their business normally. The protest turned into a confrontation between the crowd and African troops. Burundian soldiers that came under attack shot at the protesters. We are here with women and children. We are unarmed. Burundian troops have killed five people. We were at the UN offices explaining things and they shot at us. Is that the way to respond? Central African Republic is for Central Africans. According to reliable sources, two people were killed and a number of wounded were taken to Bongi's hospital. French and African forces issued a warning to Central African civilians. International troops threaten to use more force if the population interferes or opposes military operations. We now take our second break.
Welcome back. And before we take leave of you, a quick reminder of our day's top stories. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs has launched a debt management advisory committee with the additional responsibility of helping to address loan and debt management issues. Gambians from both the public and private spares and a team of Italian investors have been exploring potential investment areas in the country under the aegis of West Africa Constellation Program and Constellation Consortium Gambia. Frustrated and running out of patience, angry protesters in Nigeria have hit out at their government for its passive inaction in freeing after-school girls seized by Boko Haram. But President Goodluck Jonathan said his administration is working rel relentlessly to secure the release of the 200-plus girls. And two days after classing in the Central African Republic left some 17 people dead, tension is still running high in Bangui, with troops from Burundi coming under attack from aggrieved civilians. That was all in this edition of the news. Thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay tuned. Thank you. 